My name's Dan. My call sign's Victor Echo 7 Victor Uniform, and I'm making another short video on the topic of APRS, which uh, stands for Automatic Packet Reporting System. And some might call it Automatic Position Reporting System, but the actual proper acronym is uh, Automatic Packet Reporting System. And I'm just going to go over some of the uses for it and what we use it for in amateur radio. So this video might be helpful to someone that's new, a new ham who's heard the term APRS and doesn't know what it is, or maybe someone that's been around for a while but hasn't uh, had a chance to learn about APRS yet. Um, you know, we have so many modes available to us in amateur radio that um, you may have not got a chance to, uh, to learn about it yet. And uh, basically what it is is it's a, a mapping system. So it enables us to um, beacon our location and it'll show up on a map. Um, and there's other purposes too. Uh, you can send messages, status reports. Um, so folks, uh, you know, you can also, there's also an SMS gateway. So you can send messages to a cell phone. Um, and this could be very helpful if you're in an area where there's no cell service. Um, and it's, it's useful to uh, search and rescue groups you know, uh, backcountry users, hunters, um, there's many, many different uses for it. And, and some folks will have something called, a, you know, like a spot messenger, stuff like that. They say maybe they don't need APRS. But again, anything like a spot messenger, any of that commercial infrastructure, it's, it's dependent on commercial infrastructure. And it will be, uh, you know, that could go down. And you also have to pay a fee for it. <laughs> uh, but with APRS, being that it's amateur radio, it's something that, uh, we we take care of everything involved, all the infrastructure, all the technology. We the people, so it's um, it's something uh, a really good tool to have in your tool bag. So I'll give a few uh, real life examples of uh, of how to use it and what it looks like, and uh, hopefully just give you an overview of what APRS is. So there's several ways to get. APRS and get involved and start sending your positions out and reports. But um, the easiest way is to just buy a radio that already has APRS capability. But you can also build your own TNC and, you know, repurpose an older radio, stuff like that. Um, but you, there's a lot of radios that are readily available. This is a radio here. This is a Kenwood THD72. So it has a GPS built in here, as you can see, and also a built in TNC. And um, as you can see, it's uh, tuned to 144.39. So it's the same frequency all across North America for APRS. You don't have to change that anytime. And it's very easy to set up. You just go in here into your settings and you can set up, uh, you know, put your call sign in there. And um, then you'd need to put in, um, you know, what some of the options, if you want to display your speed, your altitude, um, your position comment, your status text, um, the icon. So this radio, I normally carry it on my motorcycle. So I have the, the motorcycle icon on there. Um, and uh, then what type of beaconing you want. This one's set to smart beacon packet path. Uh, it's set to uh, new N, right? Which is basically like a two hop path or three hops. So there's the hops. It means how many digipeters it's going to go across. And uh, you so there's all kinds of things you network you want it set to APRS, but that's all it's specific to each radio that you have. But it's quite easy to figure out for each uh, radio you have how to set it up, and uh, and you're good to go. And a radio like this, it's all here in one package. The GPS, everything's built in, so it's really really easy. Then you got a radio like this here. This is a uh, Motorola XPR seventy five fifty. FM and DMR radio and uh, you can it's also got a built-in GPS and so you can also send APRS packets out uh, with this radio um, it's on UHF so it's not on the traditional 144.39 it's going to be going through a DMR repeater and uh, that's just another way of doing it you could also there's also uh, APRS I gates on HF so you could have it uh, set up with an HF radio so there's various ways um, to get your packets out. So this is another example of a radio that's APRS capable. It's a Yezu FTM 400. 
and um, this is mounted in my truck. And again, there's a built-in GPS in, in this head unit and also a built-in TNC. So uh, as you can see here, 144.39, that is uh, the APRS frequency. And um, again, the settings and, and whatnot to adjust that, it's all very simple. And you can go in uh, into these, into the settings here and find things. There's a compass, right? It's showing me my altitude and that sort of thing. Um, those are the satellites that we're receiving on the GPS. Um, you can also, uh, there's a way to go, all kinds of things. You can see how far someone is away from you. Um, you know, if you go in here, station list. If I can get the camera here, just stay in one spot. Station list. So it's showing actually the top one is the closest station to me, I believe, is how it's set right now. But these are different call signs, VE7CYB, Fernie's a Digipeter, you know, and if you click on these, uh, on them, it will tell you some information. Uh, you can see that it's to the east of me. It's 23.2 miles away, right? So now if that, that could be your friend out there, you know, uh, with his call sign, you can see how far away from me is, what it position is. Um, that's just an example of just ready to go, what's already in the radio. This could be connected up to a computer or a laptop in your vehicle. You could have real-time mapping, um, but this is just what you have right away built in in the radio, so it's pretty neat. Now, if you just took any radio and tuned it to 144.39, you'd probably hear APRS traffic going on, and this is uh, maybe one of the... Right there, you heard that? That's what it sounds like right and you'd have to have a uh, tnc hooked up to decode that and uh, or an aprs capable radio okay so this is an example of some of the mapping that i was talking about which is sort of uh, one of the main features of aprs and um, there's several ways that you could be viewing the map you could be using a program on your computer called ui view and uh, view it that way or uh, in this case, what we're looking at here is APRS.FI. It's a website called APRS.FI, and you can access that from, from any device with uh, internet connection, as well as you can send a link uh, to a friend or something, and they could track you on their, on their cell phone. Um, but of course, the internet's not required for APRS. You could just have uh, your radio connected into your computer with the uh, UI view and be receiving the packets that way. But the internet is helpful. Um, it, it helps us to, um, it just makes it easier if you want to view things on the internet or um, things like the SMS gateway we talked about. Um, so it's it's all interconnected. And uh, these here, these uh, this signifies uh, a digipeter. So there's a digipeter here in Fernie, Sparwood, uh, Mount Baker here. This is in the East Kootenai region of British Columbia. And uh, these particular digipeters are all sponsored and, and put on by uh, the East Kootenai Amateur Radio Club. But each area, you know, a club will be putting up a digipeter or uh, private persons. And there really is very, very good coverage all around the United States and Canada. And um, in cases where there is no digipeter coverage on VHF, that's on the 144.39 frequency that we talked about. Um, there's other options. There's HF. There's also some satellites and like the International Space Station has a digipeter on it. And uh, many times I've put beacons through that, even just with the handheld radio um, when it's passing overhead. But uh, you can see here, if I zoom in a bit, you can see my call sign there, VE7VU. And if you look closely, it's the little motorcycle icon. So this was earlier today, uh, this morning, actually. I was on my motorcycle, and I rode up here, went up the highway, I went up to Kimberley. And I did a little loop, and I came back. And um, all along the way, it, it beaconed um, along there and, and tracked me. And um, you can click on, you know, on a station and find out more information about it. Like, uh, it shows here what channel I was monitoring on the radio. It was BC1 DMR. That's the digital uh, channel here in BC. So if somebody wanted to get a hold of me, they'd know I was monitoring that. You know, and it shows the exact uh, coordinates here. It shows, um, you know, 
last position, what radio was being run. So there's all kinds of information there that you can find. And, um, you know, and then people will have weather stations uh, set up, for example. Um, this here is a view of uh, Northwest Montana. And um, well, right here, this is another Digipeter. That's WRD set, WR7DW, that's Don's Digipeter. Um, I believe he had a weather station somewhere, but <laughs> here in Whitefish, Montana, there's a weather station. And so it's constantly updating the temperature for us to take a look at. It says it's 7.2 Celsius, the humidity and pressure. And um, you can view this all on your radio too, um, this, this information. So, and so you can see what's going on. It's, so depending on your area, this map may be very, very populated or not as populated in the big city centers. Here it's pretty rural. But in the bigger cities, um, it's just full of stations being tracked all the time. And as I zoom out, you can see there's many, many more <laughs> weather stations and uh, and whatnot. So, <clears throat> yeah, so even if you don't have an APRS radio right now or the capability, you can still go and log on to APRS.FI and check out your area and see what's going on. So it's, uh, you know, and I can see some other stations here. Um, it looks like K7IU was in Cranbrook today and looks like it came up from Idaho. VA7RGP over in Castlegar. So those are some of the um, some of the mapping features and there's people have home stations and um, weather stations and uh, so anyway that kind of um, explains it and um, hopefully you can see the use for it and um, Maybe you'll, you'll get involved. The, the system's all there and ready to go. And uh, all you have to do is get, get some equipment uh, to do this. And after that, you're not going to be paying anything. There's no fees or anything. And um, it's a, it's a well-maintained system. So uh, hopefully that uh, explains a few things for some people. Thanks for watching at 7.3.